All right, so a few months back, I made a video on an anamorphic lens for iPhone. It was something you attached to your phone and then you could film with, and it turned your footage from like the standard 16 by nine aspect ratio into anamorphic footage itself. But the way that works and the way anamorphic works is it's a lens that takes, you know, the standard aspect ratio that your camera puts out, which is like 16 by nine. And the lens itself takes footage and squeezes it. So that way you have to de-squeeze it in post and then you end up with a wider looking shot, kind of like you see in a lot of movies, which is exactly why movies movies use anamorphic lenses in the first place and talk about just how to do that. So right here, I have some sample videos in this folder here. You can see I have, you know, a few shots, whatever. We'll go ahead and choose this shot. Let's uh, grab it from there. So press I to enter and then O right there. I want this shot. I'll drag it into my timeline. You can obviously see that right now the timeline is a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Nothing is different, nothing has changed, and it looks not anamorphic at all. So what do we do first? Well, let's go ahead and change our sequence settings. So in our timeline, select it, go to sequence, sequence settings. Down here under frame size, you'll see 3840 by 2160. Now, obviously I'm shooting in 4K. You might have 1920 by 1080p footage. Doesn't really matter. All you have to do is take your width of your frame, which in my case is 3840. Like I said, yours could be 1920 and divide that by 2.35. And with that in mind, we can go ahead and get the value of 1634 or alternatively for 1920 footage, 817. And if I'm incorrect, they'll be on the screen to make sure that I am correct. That being said, if you go ahead and enter that, you can also change any other sequence settings you might want to. Press OK. It'll ask you if you want us to delete all the previews for the sequence. Press OK again. And you'll notice that now our footage is extra wide, like anamorphic should be. So we have the first step down. Now we can go ahead and add some effects. So click your footage, select it, make sure it's selected. Over here in effects, if you don't have effects, you can go to window, go down here, go to effects. Underneath effects down here, I already have it typed in actually. Transform, we wanna go ahead and drag a transform effect on there. We also wanna go ahead and add two more effects. VR, chromatic aberration. So we'll do ahead and type that, chromatic aberrations. And then we also wanna drag in lens distortion. So lens, click and drag. Now we have all three of these on here. Go up here to effect controls, scroll down till you see the effects. I'm gonna go ahead and reorganize these. So let's close these really quickly. Now, you can obviously see on the footage here that it doesn't look right yet. It looks kind of like, you know, VHS-y. If you would, we don't want VHS looking footage. So we're gonna change this, but we'll get to that in just a second. Under curvature, I noticed that anything between eight and 12 kind of feels proper, kind of looks right. So I'm just gonna go with like 10, for instance. That's fine. Under vertical decentering, anywhere from between negative one, positive 1 1.5, all those are fine. I'll go with like negative 1.5, maybe this negative one, if it won't allow you to do that. It kind of shifts it just a little bit off-centered and that's all we're going for. Close lens distortion. Under aberration itself, you have a value right now of negative 10. That's a bit too intense. So if we want to change this, you know, we can just drag the scale up and down till we see almost nothing being changed. I think right there, negative five, maybe even negative two is fine. Under aberration for blue, let's go ahead and change that to like two as well. We don't want to affect too much. We don't want to make this look aberrated. We just want to add a little bit of lens distortion and aliasing if you would. So those two values are fine. You can change the fall off distance if you want it to be less intense or more intense. I'll put it at 25, just go in the middle there. And then um, let's close this. And then all we wanna do is get rid of these white bars because obviously that doesn't look right. So take your scale, go to like 110 I think should do it. We can also change the position here, should it be a little off centered. And this is our final shot. So if we play this back here, there we go. Obviously our footage is now extra wide looking. The footage itself isn't extra wide, but our sequence will be exported looking as if it's extra wide. That is how you take any footage you have, doesn't matter what it is, and make it look like it was shot on an anamorphic lens. Of course, there's more you can do, but that's it. That's all, all I have for you guys today. I hope it helped you. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Uh, goodbye.